The main thing that I look for when I open up a design resume is that it's clean. As long as it's clean, I don't give it a second thought about what's going on in that resume. However, I'm gonna really judge you on your portfolio, not your resume. Let's take a look at my first ever resume, the things that I would change and what I find important as someone looking to hire someone for a position. So my first ever resume, circa 2011 or so, I have a giant name at the top, which was part of what I thought was gonna be like my brand. I was gonna put the big name on a whole side of a business card because I thought, hey, I'm gonna have business cards to hand out to everyone. And I also thought, you know, and, and rightfully so, I wanted to stand out. My resume is laying on a desk of a bunch of resumes that's the one that's gonna stand out. I'm gonna see that name, it's memorable. So I had a couple sections, education experience, proficiency, design study, employment awards and references. If we go through each in education, I would pare this down to be just maybe the school you went to, the date that you were there and degree that you have. Because when I look at this, all I wanna know is you have some kind of related degree. You went to school for some of this stuff. Is it necessary? Not necessarily, but it is a good indicator that you have some foundation in whatever it is that we're hiring for. Experience, I actually like this section, you know, any of the little projects that I'd worked on, maybe some that I got paid for that were related to what I'd be applying for. In this case, a design position. You know, I have some multimedia work I did for Bex. I did some Photoshop web design layouts. That's some interesting, unique stuff. And I would hope also that that stuff would be available in this person, AKA myself's, portfolio. That's what I would like to see. If you've done these projects, show me in the portfolio what those projects were. I'm interested now. I would include a section like this showing your experience or your previous jobs and the roles that you had. Proficiency and design study. This section I would just completely combine into something design skills, proficiencies. Tell me everything you know and you've worked with and have a working knowledge of. One thing not to do here, don't give me little little bubbles, like a little chart of how well you know InDesign, how well you know Photoshop, seven stars out of 10. I'm gonna judge your skill set based on your portfolio and what I see represented in your work. Plus, you're never gonna get to 10. If you're 10 out of 10 stars in Photoshop, that's telling me you think you don't have anything more to learn and I can guarantee you there's so much more to learn for everyone in the world, even the most expert of experts. Don't sell yourself short here. Have you worked in HTML, CSS? No, I couldn't just sit down and code with a blank slate, but I could work with the code and do some JavaScript things and work in the CSS just because you don't know it completely and you might be a little bit like, I have some things to learn. That's okay. Work that out in the interview process, but if you have some sort of working knowledge in it, go ahead and put it in your resume. Employment is kind of related to experience. For me, I would probably combine uh, those two a little bit. So I'd have, hey, I was employed by Bex Hybrids and then I did these jobs and did this and that there and I worked for this long and my role was X, Y, Z. I know that as a student, I didn't have very many related jobs in the industry. So I have YMCA on there as well. Mainly I did that because I also included references from there that are more or less character references. I want you to know that I've had jobs and I'm trying to get more into this this field, but I've have had previous jobs. So I have some experience being an employee and being professional. Awards, I would almost completely just nix this from the whole thing. I thought it was important at the time, but honestly, awards don't really matter. Yes, you can be a part of a team, win some awards, but never has that come up anytime I've ever applied for anything. References is a great section. You wanna have some character references here. You wanna be able to show that you were a good employee and you have some people that are on your side that your future employer could call. And a quick story, when I got my job with the Pacers, they 100% called some of my references. That is something that really happens out there. Your references do get called, so make sure you put some that those people would put in a good word for you and make sure you ask them in advance whether or not they can be a reference for you. And at the bottom of this resume was some contacts. So all in all, it wasn't a bad first resume. Now let's take a look at what I changed after my first job going into the job I have now, how did I edit that resume? As you can see, I actually reduced the size of my name at the top and just made it a clean little design inside of a rectangle. That's all I wanted was something nice and clean. And then I tried to really create only five sections on here. So I reduced it from seven sections down to five and combined a few. I have contact information right away. 
education is very minimal. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Visual Communication from Ball State University. 2008 to 2012, that's when I was there. Okay, when we look at my experience, which is kind of next up, you might look at skills next, either or, doesn't really matter. It shows you my experience in the multimedia and design industry. I worked at Bex, I put a little paragraph on there detailing what I did for them. I also been doing this whole pixel and bracket thing. So I put a paragraph on there detailing that as well. Then as far as skills, I tried to put on there quickly what I've worked with and I tried to categorize them a little bit into different sections and I kept this all in one area. So everything I had a working knowledge of, I put here, I put my references down there and then I put contact info at the bottom. That was my first ever resume. And then my second resume, when I made it some updates to it, make sure it's clean. Make sure you properly represent your experience and your skill set, and then make sure you have an easy link to your portfolio because that's where the true bread and butter of your application is gonna be as far as how you'll be judged as a designer or a creative in the industry.